Hi guys, uh, in this video I'm gonna discuss uh, the BRM H16 engine and basically uh, by 1966 you had a new formula in Formula 1 basically 3.0 uh, liter engines and um, uh, before 1966 from 61 to 65 uh, you had the 1.5 liter formula and what BRM thought BRM uh, had a very successful V8 uh, 1.5 liter engine and let me just draw it from the front it would look something like that well, that's that's too flat let me put it that's better yeah so that's the V engine from the front Okay, let me just say here's the crankshaft. Here you have the cylinders, pistons, another piston. And that was their V8, 1.5 liter V8 from uh, 1965, uh, or let me, let, me, let me say 1962 onwards. It was called the P56. And what they thought for 1966, they decided, okay, you know what? This engine is so great, we've got a brilliant combustion chamber in here. Why not take that engine and double it up? Now, how do you double up a V8 engine? Well, there are two ways. You're definitely gonna have a 16 cylinder engine. Now, one way to double it up is to increase its length. So basically, looking from the side, the engine would look something like that. And the V8 would have four cylinders in each section of the V. Doubling that would mean adding another V to the end of that. So we'd have eight cylinders in total uh, in each section, making 16 cylinders. However, a long engine is bad news because you've got a long crankshaft supplying all those uh, uh, cylinders and having eight cylinders in a row would have a very long crankshaft that would twist and and you know it would be very difficult to manufacture and very difficult to keep straight all those uh, t twisting moments and and, and 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 pressures on that long crankshaft bad idea so what they did they said you know what uh, let's take that v8 engine flatten it okay just open up that v and place another similar flat engine on top and this way we have 16 cylinders one v engine on top of the other you've got four cylinders here four here four here and four here there you go that's why that's how you get 16 cylinders h because if you look at it it's basically like an h lying on its side okay thus thus was born the h16 engine or uh, 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 known by its type number uh, was the p uh, i think it was the 75 exactly the p75 now the problem with the p75 in theory it sounded great it had a brilliant combustion chamber, a very successful, a very optimal combustion chamber, which was uh, very successful with their V8 engine. However, having two crankshafts means, first of all, extra weight. Those two crankshafts have to be geared together to one output. Again, uh, you have a complex gear mechanism, which adds weight and, you know, more components means more uh, more reliability issues. And those were the problems with the with, with this with this H16. It was too heavy and too complex. And it wasn't successful at all. That engine in two years just won one Formula One Grand Prix, and that was not with BRM but with Lotus. Lotus had a supply of BRM H16 engines, and they with Jim Clark. They won uh, the only victory of that H16 engine, and um, 
Bjerg himself, the works team, never won with that thing. And the victory was in Watkins Glen in 1966. Um, in 1967, BRM developed the 816, made it lighter, solved some reliability problems. But in 1967, another engine emerged, and that was the Cosworth DFV V8, and that engine changed the face of Formula One. And after 1967, that engine was scrapped, and BRM reverted to a V12 much simpler, much more, much lighter, and much more effective engine. And in fact, Tony Rudd, the guy who came up with the idea of H16, he said that he should have started with a V12 engine instead of that H16 engine. The H16 engine is an interesting, was an interesting exercise. It was technologically very interesting, but uh, from a sporting point of view, a complete failure.